Hey everybody, how's it going? In some of my past videos, I've stressed how important it is to create a guide for your day. So each day, what I like to do is create a list of things that I would like to get done. And what I do is I'm very, very generous with how much time I will give to each task. I will take a very basic task and I will break it down into its several subtasks. And I will give each of those subtasks 10 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour, even if it's something as basic as log into a website, look at this page, configure this thing. What I find this does is it takes tasks that I would otherwise procrastinate and not do, and it gets me to do them because once you break it down into such a teeny tiny task that you there's no excuse anymore, you are just a piece of crap if you cannot get this done in a 24-hour day, you lose the excuses to not do things that will lead to a more prosperous future. And there's another element that I want to add on to what I've discussed in these other videos, which I think would really help business owners who are in that beginning stage of their business where they're, re they're doing all the work themselves because they can't afford to hire someone else. But if they continue doing all the work themselves, they will never be able to teach someone else how to do it, which would allow them to grow. Or they're not able to take part in activities that would allow their business to grow because they're busy servicing customers. I talk about this in an old video I did where I talk about real work versus hamster wheel work. Hamster wheel work is the work that you do where it doesn't matter if you do it 10,000 times, 100,000 times. The moment that you stop doing that work, that work ceases to make you money. Real work is work that you do once. However, the, the proceeds of that work will pay dividends time and time again into the future. So an example of hamster wheel work would be if I fix a motherboard. An example of real work would be if I produce a really good website. If I produce a really good website, once I do that work once, it will bring in customers for years to come. If I fix one motherboard, uh, the moment I'm done fixing that board, it's not going to bring me any more. It's not going to bring me any more money. I fix that board. I stop, and the moment I stop, the money from that particular activity stops coming in. Now, it's very difficult to balance hamster wheel work and real work when you're doing everything yourself, particularly if you've gotten to the point where eight or ten or fourteen or sixteen hours of your day is stuck doing the hamster wheel work, answering the phone responding to customers, making orders from vendors, returning things to vendors, and so on and so forth. There are many strategies that people will use to get out of the hamster wheel phase of business or the survival phase of business where all they are doing is constantly working in a little hamster wheel just to survive in the hopes that someday they may be able to hire one other person or two other people that are following a manual that is put together by the business. Now, I want to try to give you uh, some advice that on what's helped me to do the same. To be clear, I am not the best business owner by any way, any means. I am not a professional business owner. I have a business because I could not get a job. Uh, they, you know, There's a lot of people that will argue about minimum wage. It should be 7, it should be 15, it should be 20. Uh, for me, the real minimum wage often has been zero because that's what you get when no one wants to hire you. And my experience with no one wanting to hire me was that I needed to find work for myself. I'm not a business owner because I'm a business, I'm, you know, some sort of a business professional or business school graduate. I'm a business owner because I was, for lack of a better way to put it, a bum that couldn't get a job. So the best thing I could do is drum up work for myself, post a Craigslist ad, post a Kijiji ad, an ad on Backpage, an ad on all these other platforms, and put up a crappy little website and see, you know, knock on doors and see who, want, who wants to pay for the services that I offer. And that is how I became a business owner. So one of the things that I find interesting is a lot of people will say that how you do one thing is how you do everything. And I find that this is one way in which there was actually a parallel to my experience with the miserable public school system. So my experience with the miserable public school system is they would often give you two or three or sometimes even four hours of homework. So I would get to school at seven or eight in the morning. I would be done with school at three o'clock. I'd get home maybe around 3.30, 3.45. And I would be expected after doing my six to eight hours in the prison of the New York City garbage public school system where you deal with teachers that don't really like you, that don't really want to be there, that are not really excited to be reading the same old shit using the same old format that they were 
20, 30, 50, probably 100 years ago in that garbage system, uh, is that once I was done with my day of prison, that I had to sit through another three to five hours of prison of doing the exact same thing. And I found this to be an insane waste of my time. I wanted to use my personal time to learn. I wanted to use that time to read. I wanted to use that time to learn about computers, to learn from the internet, to uh, un try to understand what's going on in the world and learn things that are actually of interest to me, not do, oh, you understand how to do this math problem once? Do that math problem a hundred times. Oh, you want to know you, know, you you need to learn how to how to say this word or what this word is. Oh, you know what it means. Okay, now write that word a hundred times. Like, you know this type of just utterly brain numbing garbage. I considered it to be a complete and utter waste of my time. So what I would try to do is try to figure out ways to do two things at once. You know, if I was in math class, I would do my, you know, when there were gaps, I would do my science homework. When I'm in science class, when there were gaps, I would do my English homework. If I was in English class and I had already, and I knew I could read the spark notes and not to listen to the lecture, I would then do my economics homework and so on and so forth. So that by the time I got home, I actually didn't have any extra work to do. And I was able to skate my way through school for a good period of time, get home and tell my parents that I had no homework because they got rid of it or something and my parents would, uh, bought it. They, 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 bought the, they bought the line of bullshit. Sorry, Dad, if you're watching this uh, uh, 14 years after the fact, but yes, I, I, was, I was making that shit up for most of high school. Hopefully you can forgive me because from what I hear, come on, let's face it, you, you know school sucked. You know that shit's a fucking scam so that parents don't have to put people in daycare or figure out a proper way to educate their children that's not miserable. Anyway, so... One of the things that I kind of took on when I became an employer and when I had my own business was I would always try to figure out ways to do two things at once so that I would not actually have to go through the work of, of like stopping what I'm doing to put together a manual or a set of procedures and so on and so forth. So I'm always thinking, how can I do two things at the exact same time? So for instance, let's say that I need to hire new people to do customer service, as most people are going to have to do if they have this type of business. Now, most people don't write a guy. Here's what they do. They don't quit their job have no business, and then say, while I have no business, let me write a guide on how to deal with every single different customer inquiry, every single device, every single problem with a proper explanation, with a guide for a new person. They don't do that. The first thing that you're going to do as a new business owner is you're going to try as hard as you can to get as much business as possible. You will, And once you start getting that business, you're going to work your ass off to get all of the work done. And typically what happens with most businesses is they finally start hiring people once it's a little late because you can't afford to hire somebody and so you have a lot of business. And then at that point, there's no time to train them. So what I like to do is something like this. I realize that I am not going to sit down for another eight hours and write a guide. So what I would do is I create a little spreadsheet and I try to fill in the gaps. I realize that if I make it my goal to write a guide on how to answer every single question, that that's a big task. It's never going to get done, right? So what I do is every single time a customer will send an email, I will write out a, for that situation, model, problem, why I'm writing this email, and I will make a copy of that as a canned response. I will write a canned response that it really genuinely describes everything about that particular problem, every sort of related issue, every potential concern they have, answers every potential follow-up question that they're going to have, and I'll put that in a canned response. And I will say, when it is this issue, I would suggest this canned response. Here are the prices. Here are the, the things it could be that's wrong with it. Here are the reasons that the price is what it is or the reason that our response is what it is so that when they, it's not just you're, repeat, you're regurgitating what I'm telling you to say, you're actually saying what you're supposed to say. And I would do that for each one. So rather than simply respond to every email, I would respond and have it take, let's say, two or three, two minutes. Now it takes me two and a half minutes. However, that work that I do once now pays dividends into the future. I'm now not just doing the hamster wheel work of responding to the email, I'm doing the hamster wheel work and the real work of creating that guide that is then going to allow everybody into the future to be able to answer that same question as if they are me without asking a question. Because not only will they have the information, they will also have the why that information exists. And this is very, very helpful because most people in the beginning are just going to think, okay, I got to do this, and they're going to do it as quickly and quickly as possible, and eventually they'll get to a point where they think, well, I'm able to do it faster than I can teach someone else how to do it, so I might as well just keep doing it. 
But then as you keep getting busier, you keep doing it all yourself. You understand how that, how that doesn't work, right? Because they believe that they are never going to be able to get out of that hamster wheel of doing it all themselves. So the way you get out of that hamster wheel is simply put, every single time you do something, you say why at the same time. Now, you are not going to have a full manual immediately that way. But what you'll find is within one to three months, everything that really matters will be in there. And the things that are not in there are going to be the things that people don't ask you about anyway. So perhaps they don't matter. Now, another way that I did this early on was with YouTube videos. When it came to trying to multitask, I had, when I really, when I started doing the YouTube videos, I believe I had, back then there were two people working, <laughs> two people. And when I st was started really getting time to do the board repairs, there was still, I believe, two people working here. I did not have the time to do full-time marketing. I did not have the time to set up a training routine so that I could train people into the future. I barely had time to fix boards. So what I did was I'd killed three birds with one stone. While everybody else was busy saying that I'm an idiot for showing other people how to do board repairs, you're going to be bankrupt. Everybody else is going to undercut you. I can't believe you're showing customers how to do it themselves, you dumbass. What they didn't understand is that I'm actually getting three things done selfishly and without even considering the positive effect on the world of teaching millions of people how to fix their own devices, how to save money, and how to make money for their businesses. A, I'm doing my board repair. B, I am creating the training material that will allow me to teach new people how to do the repairs while simultaneously growing a network of people that are like-minded, who are interested in this, that I can then use as a pool of future job applicants. Paul was a stream moderator. He is now one of the lead board repair technicians. Chris watched my stuff on YouTube. He's now one of the best board repair technicians that I've ever met. Camille also was someone who was watching my stuff while he was working on fixing apps. And now he's one of the best board repair techs that I've ever hired. And I, uh, uh, this is all great stuff. And the third thing I was doing was demonstrating competence. While everybody else was putting a lot of time and effort into these marketing strategies to try to figure out how to convince people that they were great at what they did, I honestly wasn't even trying to be, I really wasn't. If you look at my videos, they were not really well produced. The backdrop of the videos was not your, your quote, professional environment. For me, it was professional because I got my work done and my customers were happy. But you know, in that bullshit ass old definition of professional or everything has to look perfect and you cannot see any flaw. And you real you know that that person is doing their best to hide the reality or the truth of everything from you and present the, their best foot forward rather than the reality of the situation. I just presented it. I just presented my life as it was, you know, oh, this chip came off the book and god damn it oh, the solder balls flew away piece of shit you know? it, it was the reality of the job and so i was able to demonstrate that whether it was a good day or a bad day whether i have a 102 fever or i'm feeling great whether i'm in a time crunch or i have the time to do the job properly that the job is able to get done properly so in the same amount of time that it would usually take me to fix a board maybe you know add maybe five or eight minutes on here because you know you got to edit the video and you have to explain things in the same amount of time that i could do a, a board repair what i'm doing is i'm taking that exact same amount of time and effort or very similar and I'm stacking things on top of it. So now it's not just the hamster wheel work of fixing a board. It is also the marketing of the business. It is also training my future staff members on how to do repairs so that I don't have to train them because past Lewis already did it. And three, it is creating a network of board repair technicians that I can then hire from so that I don't have to go to Craigslist and find crackheads that don't know what they're doing to that are going to show up and screw everything up. I can actually reach out to a network of people that are pre-sorted, pre-interested in everything because they were watching my content all along and when they show up, they're 90% ready to go. I don't really have to do much other than explain some basics of how the business works and the standards and they can get started. When Paul started here, I mean, he was getting PM Sleep S4Ls on day four. Uh, you know, Camille was getting all sorts of... Uh, strange problems shortly in. Chris was, uh, you know, reballing PMICs and PCHs and stuff uh, and replacing PCHs and all sorts of strange shit, uh, you know, not far into the job because they were watching the content all along. And A, a lot of them already knew how to do it, but B, if they didn't already know how to do it, they were already of the mindset and it was easy for me to reach out to them. So what I did is I took the limited amount of time that I had 
and I took one action that I was doing, but I found out how to ha- may allow that one action to affect or help me in numerous ways. I was actually uh, creating, I was uh, making sure that the one action I was doing had numerous uh, results or consequences. Again, you could answer an email in the moment, but if you answer that email in the moment and simultaneously craft that email so well that it can be a canned response and then put it into a spreadsheet, what you're doing is you are creating the guide for the future to replace you. So now you're not just doing one set of work. And I find that the best business owners, so the people that really seem to succeed, are not even necessarily the people who start with the most money. They're not the people who are the smartest. They're the people who manage to figure out how to cram that much productivity into a short period of time or a short amount of effort. It's the people who cheat. You know, when I was in school, I learned that the people that spend the most time studying and put the most effort in and blah, 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 are the ones that are going to do well in life. And in reality, the people who seem to do well in life are the people that, fig- you know, figure out how to get their science homework done in math and their math homework done in, done in the English class so that when they get home, they can, uh, they, they, you know, they can play, they can play Dota 6.24 on their AMD 3000 plus Venice core processor that they overclocked to 2.65 gigahertz on their DFI NF4 DAGF motherboard that they got used on eBay for 60 bucks back in the day. Uh, this is a, ah, I had a Dell 2005 FPW monitor back when that was considered high resolution. Remember those days? I had a 250 gigabyte serial ATA hard drive back when that actually meant something. Anyway, if you figure out how to stack your accomplishments, figure out how to like, kind of really... Make sure that when you're doing one thing, you're not just doing one thing, you're actually doing numerous things. You're not doing numerous things because your left hand is doing one thing while your right is doing another, but simply put your action in and of itself in that time period accomplishes multiple things. That allows you to add a lot of productivity. Because I was thinking about this. I was speaking with uh, one of my employees uh, earlier in the week, and he's one of the people that is typically more willing to point out when he believes that I'm being an idiot than other people. He does it in a very respectful way, but I appreciate that he often points out when I'm being an idiot, because oftentimes I am an idiot. And I was genuinely wondering to myself, you know, why is it? I'm just thinking of all these businesses that have failed. TechServe, Cable Doctor, uh, The Little Laptop Shop, Dr. Brendan, uh, Digital Society, and countless others that have failed or gone under in the time period since I started my business. Many of these businesses started with more press. They started with more money. Like, What is it that allowed this business to pursue in this industry for so long? And I, you know, and the thing is, I'm not smarter than all of these people. I really am not. I mean, you should see my grades in high school. They were awful. I'm not I'm not particularly intelligent. I'm not uh, incredibly sad. I really think a lot of what it had, I, I think a lot of what helped me was the ability to, while doing one task, actually get three or five or seven positive results out of it rather than one. Anything that I'm doing, it's an, I'm not just doing it so that I can serve this one purpose. I'm going to make sure that whenever I'm doing something, I'm serving this purpose and this purpose and this purpose, and this purpose. And then once you can really start stacking that, and once you can stack that and teach your own staff members to this, these basic common principles, then you are able to multiply the productivity. And something that I think that I have kind of failed at is I haven't really been able to impart to the people that I work with this idea of stacking the productivity because I think that when I do it, I do it in a manner where I make it look like it requires a lot more multitasking than it does. And I think that my general disorganized way of explaining something that's in my head when I'm not talking into a camera, I'm not good at getting across that this is actually a very productive way to go about your day. And I also don't think that I have succeeded in demonstrating this as a principle in a way that will convince someone that it actually works. A lot of the people that were around when I started doing this are no longer around now, so they're not really able to see that. And I think part of the authority you gain from people is when they can actually see, we used to be here, and now we're here. Or, you know, we used to make this much money, and now the business is over here, so we make this much money. You know, they can actually look and see, oh, 
I make double the salary that I made back then. Okay, maybe this actually works. And since a lot of the people that are here now were not here back then, they, it may be hard to kind of gauge that. I'm not sure. But it's something that I want to really make sure that I'm able to impart onto others. Because if I do it, then I can get productivity from here to there. But if I can get everybody to understand this when it comes to new systems, then it really, it's not like when you add one person on, you're just adding one piece of productivity. If you're able to take this time but do five things, that means each time you add a person, you're not adding, you're not going to like just get twice the productivity. You're going to get five times or 10 times the productivity as you create new leaders moving forward. That's about it. Hopefully I've explained this in a manner without butchering it. As always, I hope you learned something and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now. Say bye, Blackberry. Oh, she's my kitty. I love this kitty. She's my girl. Who's my kitty? Who's my little Blackberry? I know. I know. You got the seat. You got the seat now. You got the armrest. Not Mr. Clinton. Not the evil Clinton monster. Who's always so loud. Good girl.